Mwah. Love you. Gentlemen, welcome back to the T. Shanley starting a business. What, you don't kiss your YouTube plaque? Every day, you should, <laughs> which we'll talk about in a second. Gentlemen, welcome back to the T. Shanley starting a business, building a brand blog. This one, big number 130, 130. It's insanity. And today, we got so many incredible questions, and I'm ready to dive in. But before I do that, just want to give you a real quick update. Last week, talking all about testing different things, and, and it was amazing. Um, it was, we, it was very, very eye-opening, uh, but we sort of started to get some data back from something else that we tested that I was pushing the team on. I'm like, I want to do a huge like flash sale on my Instagram, right? This was about three months ago. And so, so we do this, this, this Instagram. It was like 50% off for 48 hours only on Instagram. And it was something that I, I did with like Pete and Pedro. It was a flash sale and it did really well. So I'm like, hey guys, let's give it a try with, with T. Shanley and give like 50% off the first box just to my Instagram followers. And it was amazing. We signed up so many people. It was nuts, right? And we were all excited. We were all pumped up. We we're all like, yeah, awesome promotion. Well, the data just came in from that awesome promotion. And although we signed up a ton of people, it was not very profitable. And by not very profitable, we lost money on the promotion because there were so many people who just tried it just to try it and then and then canceled it um, and didn't stay you know because we at the end of the day are looking for long-term value and we need to figure out what that customer is worth and if that customer that we give the 50 percent off to that first month is going to be around and valuable enough then it makes sense right but if they're not and we just lose money because they're trying it and now our, our profit margin is cut like way down because of that discount you know where does it where does it sort of shake out so as it turns out we kind of got our our tige hanley well moisturized ass handed to us in terms of um just the financially with with that promotion it wasn't like a huge disaster like we didn't lose like like you know hundreds of thousands of dollars or anything like that and it was a very valuable lesson but what we learned from that instagram promotion is that those customers we didn't make our money back. We lost money um, on that promotion because so many of the people that just bought it right then canceled. They didn't get to the second box or the third box. A lot of times when you have a business like a Tish Hanley, a Dollar Shave Club, or another one of these subscriptions, companies will sort of take the loss on the first box, like not make money, because they know that, you know, with statistics and with history, they know that that 50% or 60% of the people that sign up and they're taking a little loss on, they're gonna be around the second month. And if out of those, then 30% are gonna be around the fourth month, and so, or third month, or fourth month. And so it's a numbers game. And at the end of the day, you've gotta figure out what that customer um, long-term value is. And with these promotions and that promotion that we ran, we realized that that was a definite, not a great promotion for us. But does this mean that that type of offer, the 50% offer on your first box, does that mean that that is just something we don't need to do? Or is it something that, that we shouldn't do on every sort of platform? And so we need to test it in other areas, in controlled environments, and look at the data. And that's one of the, the biggest lessons I can, I can say that I have learned from this because at first you're all excited, right? You're like, oh my God, sales through the roof. But then once it sort of shakes out and you get to see like three months down the road, this is kind of what happened. We lost a lot of money, which is not good, not ideal. But at the end of the day, you've got to test things. You've got to try things. That's the only way you're going to know. And so with that last promotion that I did on YouTube, where I, dr I drove people to a landing page, you know, we got some insane data. We found out that 20, 25% and 30%, it's the same, right? The, the proportion of people that signed up at 25 versus 30%, it was like literally like, like it was like two people difference. It was crazy. And so what we know now is that 25 is the number to go with as opposed to 30 because we're just giving away an extra 5%. But we also tested a 40 and the 40 was like crazy nuts, a multiple of those other people in terms of subscribers and in, in terms of the growth. And so it's about testing. Now we got to see like what happens to those people that signed up at 
Um, something else very interesting that you might find interesting is that we have a tremendous amount of people at Teach Hanley that sign up without a discount, right? And those customers are so much more valuable. Those customers that don't go and look for a coupon, use it, they are like our amazing customers. And so um, they stay longer, they, like, they're just better customers. And so now we're sort of trying to figure out what is like, okay, you know, since we want to incentivize people to stay, is it better not to, you know, give them a, a big discount, scout that discount in the beginning and incentivize them, you know, basically through price, like the longer they stay. Like if you stay for six months, this is what your, your rate will be per month. And if you stay for a year, this is what your rate will be. Just to incentivize long-term customer retention. Because at the end of the day, if you've got a business like ours, it's about retention. Let's get to the questions. First question comes from I am Arish and it says, Hi Aaron, I'm 21 from India. I'm graduating from college next month. Congratulations. I recently started a men's grooming products company. Since I'm not really making big money right now, I'm really confused. If I should get a job and work on the company part time, I don't know if it would work since I'm handling bulk of the operations right now from working with manufacturers to marketing and working with influencers, everything in between. So the question is, should you get a second job and do this sort of part time? The answer is if you are not making money and you still want to do this business, absolutely. One of the big, I guess it's something that a lot of people have to get over. I should say I had to get over. And that is, you know, when you've got an idea and you've got a business, like in your mind, like it would be amazing, right, to do it full time. And in some situations and cases, you can do that. If you've saved up a lot of money or you've got enough money sort of to, to grow your business or to start your business and also to live, that's fantastic. Most entrepreneurs don't have that situation though. And so they've got to raise money so that they can work on their business full time, but that requires you to give away equity but that's something that, that you can decide. I am of the mindset that if it's a business like this, a grooming company, kind of like I'm gonna think of it like my Pete and Pedro, right? I did that sort of part time as I did some other things to make, make money, make income because I didn't have crazy sales in the beginning and as an entrepreneur, when you're starting a business, the one thing that takes all the fun, all the amazingness out of it is having the deadline to pay rent. And so I would say if you're in a position where you could get a second job and do this part time, I say do it because you need cash to live. If you're lucky enough to eventually grow that business to where you can sort of be like, all right, I can quit this job because I'm having all my expenses paid, I'm able to take a salary, then that is ultimately the dream, man. And congratulations for starting your business. Good luck, but get a job. Mr. H has such a cool question. I love this. Uh, he says, Alpha, I'm a middle school teacher. Thank you for your, for your service. Um, teachers don't get the respect or the pay that they deserve, my friend. That is a fact. Um, anyway, back to business. And I'm thinking about starting an entrepreneur club for school or for next year's school year. Um, I've already worked with some students on an in-school Shark Tank project and would like your advice on a few things. Number one, if a student has a really good idea, what kind of protection should they look into? Patents, etc. The second question, what kind of entrepreneurial skills would you recommend a younger age group focus on 12 to 13 years old? Communication, presentation, body language, product development. I've worked a corporate sales job before, but I've been out of the game for a while. So any advice would be appreciated, thanks. Great question, this gets me so excited. And something that I wish we had um, when I was growing up, and I'm sure we had something, but I was, I was a bonehead and, and probably wouldn't have joined anyway. But, um, but yeah, I think that this is fantastic. In terms of protection, if somebody brings a super solid business idea to the table, you definitely want to look into helping them sort of protect their idea. Because even though they're young, this doesn't mean that, that they can't have the next you know, million, billion dollar idea. It's just gonna take some refinement. And as a teacher, 
I think it's your job to sort of direct them and to try and protect them because you know there are some savages out there some vultures that if they hear a good idea they would definitely steal it it doesn't matter if it's from a 12 year old a 13 year old or a 47 year old and so I would look into definitely helping them um, develop like an NDA a non-disclosure agreement look into trademarks look into patents the problem with patents is that it's super expensive and it's very very time consuming and so something that that young in terms of a business idea in its infancy I would I would look at possibly trademarking or um, or getting at least non-disclosure agreements together um, you can find them online and that's basically just letting them before they tell somebody about their idea saying hey this is protected and that's I would say probably the best first step um, also in, involving their parents and just letting them know hey you know Johnny has a great idea I think we need to look into that also maybe talk to an attorney somebody who deals with trademark patent um, law just to say hey this is what we're doing maybe have them come in and do a presentation you know attorneys may may be willing to do that they may not be but I think it'd be really cool to get their perspective so that's my two cents on question number one question number two what kind of entrepreneurial skills would you recommend a younger age group focus on I would say communication I think communication and personal presentation is so invaluable and something that that is is going to pay off regardless of if they're an entrepreneur or if they're just going to work for the man I mean whatever it is going to pay off long term to be able to express themselves and to present their project or their their idea in a in a, a poised and and well executed manner and so I think communication is is critical personal presentation what they're wearing teaching them the skills that they're going to need that I really feel aren't being taught as as much as they should be but you know being well groomed being able to communicate without saying a bunch of filler words looking people in the eye handshakes because eventually if they are entrepreneurs they're gonna need to be going to banks and asking for money teaching them they should they should always wear a tie if they're asking for money um, you know things like this I think are invaluable um, in my opinion and and something that I'm really hoping you, you do teach them because it, it's critical and and you've got a beautiful opportunity to really have an impact on these young men's lives or women's lives and for that like I say congratulations and and good luck <laughs> because I know it's not going to be easy but but I'm proud of you and excited so thank you now let's talk about YouTube and making money tiny murals has a great question he says hey Aaron it's Miguel can I consider starting a YouTube channel as a side hustle how long is a reasonable amount of time before I can consider making money from my channel how do you keep from muddying the waters between sharing your what you enjoy and needing the payday uh, keep doing what you're doing um, all that good stuff oh, this is a tough question I would say that YouTube in terms of a side hustle is is not a good side hustle people that succeed on YouTube want to share okay I, I gotta take that back I guess I'm kinda second-guessing myself going at YouTube with the idea of I wanna make money from YouTube is foreign to me I don't know what that looks like I don't know how that works I will tell you this that when I started when most successful YouTubers started it it's not about making money it was about sharing something with with people and having a passion for that and then making money trying to just like present it itself but in today's world it's very different you know a lot of people see and hear stories about youtubers making you know a lot of money and you know there 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 are millions and millions and millions and millions of millions of YouTube channels out there and the amount of people that are making money is very small in relation to the the quantity of youtubers out there it's gonna take you a while I mean why like I don't I don't like it <laughs> honestly I love the idea of starting a channel if you've got a business and you want to share you know your 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 business ideas I think that you know having a YouTube channel is 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 so special and it's I just don't like it when you think about starting it just for monetary gain I don't like the idea of trying to start a channel just to make money as a business 
If you've got a business and you want to put content out there and try to utilize YouTube as a platform to earn money for your business, I think that's great. But trying to start a channel just to make money, not knowing exactly what you want to talk about, not knowing what you want to, like, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me because you're going to need, you know, if you're expecting sponsorship, you need a ton of views. You need to do something that's going to attract viewers. And so you need to be putting out there like tons of valuable stuff. And that's the thing. People that are successful on YouTube are bringing value to whatever audience, you know, finds their content valuable. But going at it with a, you know, the mindset of, I just want to make money. I need to do this as a job. I hate that. And I don't, I'm sorry. I don't mean that. Like, I didn't think I would ever tell somebody not to start a YouTube channel. I would say start it but don't focus on the money. Don't have that be your side hustle. If you're somebody who wants to put content out there, you're somebody who has a message that you want to give, then give it, but don't do it for the wrong reasons. And I feel like too many YouTubers and too many people are getting started in YouTube, a platform that I love. Like I am very, very protective of it. I think they're getting into it because they, they think that, you know, Oh, I can make a lot of money. I can do this. Or I see this, being successful and, and, and I could do that. And, and some of them do, but that's the minority as opposed to, you know, what you can probably expect. Um, people that are successful have, have something to say and something to share. And like I said, if it's your business, then share it. Right. But, but if it's just a side hustle, and the last question we're going to get to is actually a follow-up question to a question I answered before from our friend Kano Kangawaki. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> I'm terrible with names. Anyway, long story short, he asked a question about partnering with, with these people to open a fitness center, and the fitness center is not happening. But he says, um, I want to start uploading more videos to YouTube and sort of try to grow that way. I have so much to offer, but I'm not sure how to get my videos out there. I simply don't have any subscribers, so we'll get no views. Is there any way I can sort of kickstart the process of getting viewed, viewed and subscribers? Um, the answer is awesome. See, now this is sort of the, the opposite to what I was talking about in the last question. This person has, you know, they're already interested in fitness. They, they thought about doing a fitness center. It didn't really work out. What's their next option? YouTube videos. Um, this person and in the question, they say, I've got so much to share. And, and so that's, you know, that's key. And so, yes, absolutely start uploading videos. What I would do if you want to hack the system and something that you're seeing a lot of is look at other people in your space or in your genre with fitness, look at their popular videos. What are people searching for? And then do your version of those videos. So maybe it's how to get six pack abs, or, you know, if it's Jeff Cavalier, look at his channel, or if it's, um, who are some other fitness, I don't even know, like the other fitness guys, look to see what their popular videos have been about. And I would say do your version of it. Now, don't copy their content, that's terrible and, and you know, that's just really bad form and it looks shady and not, it's just bad. Do your version of it. But I would say in terms of title, in terms of topics, looking to see what people are searching for and popular is a great way to sort of hack the system. Put it out there. This, there has never been a better time to start a YouTube channel than right now. There are so many small creators that are getting boosted and promoted. Then, you know, when I started, it was a whole different animal. I've been doing this for almost like 10 years, right? Now you've got lots of advantages. Put the videos out there, share them on Facebook, and your audience will find you. I don't know how it happens. It just happens. But congratulations, and I think it's a great, great option and very exciting because, like I said, I've said this a number of times, YouTube is, is one of the, making YouTube videos was, was probably the single best, second biggest and best decision I ever made. The first one was starting to work out. The second one was uploading videos to YouTube. There's nothing that has changed my life in a way that like, YouTube has changed my life. And um, if I didn't press upload that first time, being uncomfortable, having crappy videos, not knowing what to expect, you know, I don't know where I'd be right now. And that is where I'm going to wrap up this vlog. One gentleman, I told him not to start a YouTube channel because he was starting it for the wrong reasons. The other gentleman, I say do it because you're doing it for all the right reasons. 
You never know. You never know who's going to be the next big star. You never know who's going to be the next big thing. It's amazing. You don't have to have a super crazy nuts big audience. You need to have an engaged audience that believes in you. Treat them well, be honest with them, and be yourself. That is the best advice I can give you for, for, for being successful on YouTube. And keep uploading. Don't stop. Like it's going to be discouraging at first, but if you just keep putting content out there, at least one video a week, in my opinion, you'll be amazed at where you are in a year from now. So just go after it, get it, make it happen. Um, I'm excited. And when you do, most, make sure to post the link to your channel here. Not like spam, but I would love to check it out. So thank you so much, gentlemen. Thanks for watching. If you've got a business related question or a T. Shanley question down in the comments, let me know. Make sure to start the question with business question in all caps so that I can sort of filter through and know that that's the one I need to look at. Guys, thank you so much. We love you more than our double monk strap shoes. T. Shanley is rocking and you are helping it roll.